I won't be able to join today's satsang. However, I have a question that I think is important. There seems to be an attitude of inconsistency amongst non-dualists in as much as everything is as it is. But what place is there in this for morality? I bring this up because of the ongoing genocide against the Palestinians, not exclusively, but as just one of the several examples of Western hypocrisy. Many self-proclaimed advocates of a more just world seem particularly blind to Western, Western uh, particularly US, involvement in the genocide of Palestinians, particularly those who support the Democrats, but seem blind to the fact that it's the Democrats who are enabling this genocide. So I put the question again, what is the role of morality in non dualism I hope you will address this question and that you will put it on YouTube with gratitude to your teachings. I thank you for your question. So there's like different layers to that question. The most important layer to address, first of all, is is there a world outside of this present moment? Is there Palestine and Israel? And this is something I ask you in your very experience for you to reflect on right now. I know you're not listening to this talk, but when you do later, <laughs> that's funny, isn't it? That totally contradicts what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So when you listen to this later, <laughs> is there something outside at this moment? Is there a later? It might really appear like there is because you imagine that there's a me that's recorded this prior to you listening to it and it's uploaded onto YouTube. So there seems like there is other moments happening. There is other places in the world happening. The most important thing for you to experience, to really know as the truth, is that all there is is beingness. And beingness is timeless. This is a freedom. Beingness isn't found outside of you. It's right here as you. This is absolute love. Absolute love. Satchit Ananda. <laughs> Satchit Ananda. Yeah. So this is the most important part, is the recognition of who you are in every moment. So you're meeting the and dressing the world from love, not from time, not from you, not from a person that has ideas about things, but from presence. So you're responding from presence, you're speaking from presence, and you are empty. There is nobody there. And then that's filled with love. So the movements are from love. And this is morality to me. It might not look like our idea of morality, but this is morality. When each movement comes from love, from beingness, from presence. And that really doesn't look like what people imagine it to look like. It doesn't look like somebody that's speaking gently and not getting angry. It doesn't look like somebody that's passive and meditating all the time. It's a very, in a way you could say personal thing and you can't get certified by other people. It's like a deep knowing in yourself of coming from love. And that coming from love can include a character that has some form of neurosis about something, that feels uncomfortable about something, that has old karmas. It's that person, it, that those neuroses are from the body and who you are is beyond the body. Who you are is beingness. It's this alive presence, the co pure consciousness, which is the bridgeway between nothing and everything. And then when it all comes together, it's beingness. 
this. Sorry, I can't breathe properly if I sound like a, a troll. So that is um, pure, that is true morality. Um, and in terms of non-duality, like this realization, if the teachers or the speakers or the people that are into this are coming from love, then they're not going to come from hate. And war is created from hate. They're coming from vulnerability and love. And war is created from hate. So somebody that is in Satchitananda cannot, cannot hate. They maybe could fight, you know, if I was with, say, my mom or my partner or even Khaleesi, and something or somebody attacked, then there could be a fighting to stop that and a defending, but it's all from love. They can't hate, they can't go to war and hate and want to exterminate a people for something that's mind-bound, for a reason that's mind-bound. This will look different in everyone, though, so I can't really describe to you what that looks like. And it doesn't fit into our society's morality. Um, yeah. Well, that's a, a difficult conundrum. Yeah. Because it doesn't look like something. It's just the absence of hate, though, and that's for sure. Internally, there is no hate. Yeah, I hope that helps, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't. <laughs>